Topic modeling works in concert with sentiment analysis to gain insights into a data set. No one shares details on the development of the topic model. And so in topic modeling, there's really two broad classifications. Um, the first is an exploratory method, and the, the other method is, is more confirmatory. And, and typically in an exploratory method, you're looking at all of the comments and you're finding uh, keywords and associations of words that can be used to develop a word matrix. And, and this can be done using a variety of different uh, grouping and clustering algorithms to figure out which words are most uh, closely related and then building the word matrix from that. Um, what we've used in this approach is more of a confirmatory method. We've reviewed um, the, the existing literature and have identified some key themes that have been identified as driving satisfaction or dissatisfaction in learning settings. And based on that, we've created these general starting topic groups that we wanted to use as the basis for developing that word matrix. And so the process that we go through is to identify an operational definition for each one of these topic groups, exactly what is encompassed by that topic group, and then building the word matrix iteratively to capture as many items as possible into each one of these topic groups. Um, so as you can see here, we started with six main topic groups that are identifying satisfaction and dissatisfaction in, in learning. And we've taken that and we've built into our model a word matrix that identifies specific words or phrases that are associated with each one of those topics. Uh, in addition to that, we can add in words that um, would exclude it from the topic group if they're similar. For example, sounds like is not necessarily a term related around the technology, and we would want to exclude that. Um, professionals versus professional speech would be one that we'd want to exclude from, from, the, um, from the topic group. So we build out this in an iterative process um, starting out with you know, identified words that we found in the, the, um, the responses. And then we run the model um, on our subset and identify how many items we're fitting into each one of those categories. And we do that until the point that we were getting about 80% of the uh, opinion phrases falling into one of those classifications. Uh, that's generally the process follows very similarly to what we did with the sentiment analysis. We're trying to build up um, capturing all of those different phrases into, into different categories so we can move on into the verification and the validation stages. How are the topic group names generated for this project? Yeah, so we used as an input to it, uh, the starting point was uh, of the literature review and the terms that, that they were using. So we created a, a matrix for the different articles and then the different terms that were, use it, were used. And then we collapse those into um, kind of similar uh, definitions. And then we use the, uh, um, as a part of our research group, uh, input by the different users to figure out exactly the best description that fits into the context. You know, one of the, the things that uh, is important when you're doing data science work is to bring the subject matter expertise to bear. And in this particular group, um, we had individuals uh, in our research group that are very familiar with uh, training and education and, uh, and evaluation uh, concepts. And so they were able to provide us some input into how to craft the terminology to identify exactly what the, um, the topic group headings should be aligned with the, the literature, but with, with phrases that are meaningful for their subject matter.